see. Is it working? Uh, yeah, cool. All right, I think we're live. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, I'm on a couple minutes early because I thought I would just let some people join us before we start. Um, and if you're here, go ahead and click the share button so you can watch with friends uh, and maybe leave a little heart or a like or a comment or a heart or a like or a comment so I know that people are there because sometimes, for those of you maybe who haven't ever gone live before, it's sometimes hard to know um, if anybody's out there. So if you're here and watching, thanks so much for being here and uh, show me some love so I know I know that I'm being seen and heard. <laughs> I'll go ahead and let everybody take a view of where I am right now. It's so beautiful. I'm standing um, at an overlook, looking over the Humboldt Bay, which is on this side, and the Pacific Ocean, of course, super dynamic and beautiful over here. I'm just uh, close to Table Bluff in Humboldt County, overlooking um, the Humboldt Bay and the Pacific Ocean. And I'm going to start in just a moment. I figure I'll let a couple more people join us before we start. Um, hi, Carolyn. <laughs> Thanks for being here and telling me you're here. Happy to share this time with you today. Um, hi, everybody else who's joined us. Thanks for being here. Again, um, I'm going to give people a moment to join us, and then we'll get started on our daily live stream from the North Coast Redwoods District. So I am here at a beautiful overlook. There's some birds flying around behind me. <laughs> One just got really close to my head. Um, it's a lovely kind of foggy, a little bit drizzly day up here in Northern California. And I'm overlooking the Humboldt Bay on this side. And um, those of you who have maybe been following along our live streams know that MPA Monday is today. Every day is MPA Monday. And so, of course, I am your host for MPA Monday, because I'm the MPA gal. And right here, oop, wrong side, right here is a marine protected area. So I'll talk about that in a moment. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. It does, it does look a little stormy, but this is pretty normal for us up here. Um, fog, luckily, there's not too much wind right now, so hopefully you can hear me really well. And um, some nice coastal breeze, but nothing too crazy. And yeah, so I was just saying that the Humboldt Bay is right over here, uh, and we're kind of in the the southwest corner of the bay is right behind me. And you can see some redwood hills in the distance. Um, this is a very common scene as you look across the bay, looking east. Lots of green hills. And then over here on the side, we have, whoa, the Pacific Ocean that is nice and wavy today lots of white water um, but you don't see too many white caps far offshore so we know that there's not too much wind whoa <laughs> all right so it looks like we're at that time again so i'll just go ahead and get started with our program today hi everyone i am angie and i'm an interpreter for california state parks up here in the north coast redwoods district and i'm located right now in um, humboldt county course that's where our district is and I'm looking over the Humboldt Bay and the Pacific Ocean right near Table Bluff and uh, before we get started I just wanted to remind everyone and thank everyone for practicing good social distancing at this time and I know we're all spending a lot of time at home and we hope that doing these daily live streams is helping you kind of feel connected to your parks uh, while we are all doing our part to kind of keep each other keep our communities keep ourselves safe um, and uh, we know many of our parks are closed, but we hope uh, that the more that we kind of shelter in place and, and follow these good guidelines, the quicker we can get back to our parks. So thanks everybody for doing that and for being here and supporting what we're doing. We are being really di diligent about cleaning our equipment, um, washing our hands, using hand sanitizer, um, and making sure that 
we are following all the steps to keep ourselves and our coworkers and our communities safe up here um, in Northern California and everywhere in California in state parks. So thanks for being here and thanks for doing all of that wonderful stuff. So today I wanted to uh, first of all shout out again that today is MPA Monday. And of course MPA stands for Marine Protected Area. And uh, for those of you, now that I've maybe met sort of form informally some of you before, I am a big fan of the ocean. I'm a scuba diver and love exploring the underwater world. I think it's amazing that you just kind of look out uh, across the horizon and we just see this expansive blue body of water. But um, we actually can sometimes overlook the amount of diversity and beauty that that exists underneath the water. So my goal is to try and help us all kind of appreciate and view and respect the ocean just like we respect um, our parks. And we have these things underneath the ocean called marine protected areas and they're sort of like underwater parks. They're places where we protect habitats, animals, uh, so that they can survive and thrive and grow big and kind of ensure that we have a healthy ocean far, far into the future. So they're really amazing things. And today I am really excited to share with you what I like to call the mascot of marine protected areas. So you probably know the mascot of state parks, pretty obvious, you can see right here, um, is a bear. Maybe you can think back to the school you went to, maybe your high school, what was your mascot? And what does a mascot mean, right? It's a symbol and um, it might mean something special to you. Um, the bear means something special to us here in California and at state parks. And we protect, you know, bears all the time when we put our food in bear boxes and use like good um, kind of guidelines when we're camping in California and kind of just respecting wildlife in general. And today I want to introduce you to our mascot for marine protected areas. And they are super cool and they have a really neat superpower that I want to share with you. So I'm going to go ahead and grab them. I brought some of these animals with me today, so hang tight. All right, that wasn't too, too long. Uh, so I brought some rockfish with me today. And these are vermilion rockfish. They're bright red um, and really amazing to see underwater. You might be able to read on here. It says, how many offspring can I have per year? And that's what we're going to talk about today. This has something to do with the rockfish superpower and why they are the mascot of MPAs. So this rockfish right here is seven years old. Maybe you know somebody who's seven years old. Maybe you have a niece or a nephew or a daughter or a son or a friend who has a child who's seven years old. Uh, we all might know a seven-year-old. Um, and this fish is a seven-year-old fish. It's about, sorry, let me see, Doo -doo -doo, this big. And I want you all to guess in the comments how many babies which when I say babies, they're really like eyelash sized larva that this seven year old fish can have in its lifetime. So let's take some guesses. I'm very curious to hear what you all think. I'll wait for some comments to come in. A lot of people guess seven, maybe one per year. How many babies can this fish have? Don't you just want to know? Earl, thank you for your guess. Earl guessed 25,000, and that's a great guess. Uh, does anybody else want to guess how many babies this rockfish can have in seven years of living on this beautiful blue planet? I'll wait for one more guess. Maybe we have a brave audience member out there. <laughs> All right, Earl. You're the one. <laughs> Thanks for guessing. Um, 25,000, that's a good guess. Actually, a vermilion rockfish at about seven years old can have about 150,000 babies. I'm not sure if that's backwards for all of you. I hope it's not, but 150,000 babies in seven years of life. Okay, so that's a really impressive number. And like I said before, um, those babies are like little eyelash sized larvae that are released into the water. And I don't know if any of you are um, familiar with the idea of making a wish on an eyelash. I don't know where that came from, but um, 
when I was a kid and even today, whenever I have like an eyelash that fell off, I always grab it and make a wish like that. Who knows where that came from? But these little eyelash sized larvae, these little eyelash sized babies that these rockfish have, um, those eyelash sized larvae do something very similar. So it doesn't take very much um, energy for them to move from place to place. And of course, out in the ocean, there's lots of motion going on, lots of currents, waves, things kind of moving things around. And so those little tiny eyelash sized larvae, they can travel pretty far. Um, but these fish in general are homebodies. So they have a pretty small home range. They might stay in uh, the place where they were born for their entire life. So all of us are practicing being good homebodies right now. So we're sort of like, um, channeling rockfish energy right now. Um, so they're generally stay in a pretty small home range. So imagine if you, you know, were born in your neighborhood and you never left. That's what it's like to be a rockfish. But of course we know now those eyelash sized larvae, they travel far and wide. All right, so this is a seven year old rockfish. And of course in a marine protected area, whoop, here we go. Sorry, everything's kind of mirrored on my side. Um, there's some limits on what we can and can't take. So in many marine protected areas, if this rockfish lived there, it would be protected. Meaning that nobody can take this fish out of the ocean, whether it's to eat or to sell or just for fun, um, these fish are safe. It's basically like base in the game of tag. And so this seven-year-old rockfish has the opportunity to grow to maybe this big. So you can see the size difference. Uh, and this fish right here, the bigger one, is 18 years old now. Maybe you know an 18-year-old. Maybe you are an 18-year-old. Um, and of course, this fish can have some babies too. And I want you all to guess now that we know uh, how many babies the seven-year-old rockfish can have. How many babies do you think this 18-year-old rockfish can have? Do you think it can have more babies? Do you think it can have less babies? Um, do you think he can have the same? What do we think? Let's see some guesses. This is a big fish. If I wanted people to think it was really big, I would hold it close to the camera. <laughs> Let's see. Shoot me some guesses. We had Earl guessing 25,000 for the seven-year-old, but we know now that they can have 150,000 babies. What do we think? How many little tiny larva babies can this rockfish have? Um, this one right here is 18 years old. Uh, looks like some people are saying more. Somebody's guessing, trying to count the zeros, 2 million, a manual guest. Uh, Tammy guessed 300,000. Okay, so maybe like double the amount uh, that the seven-year-old can have. So my friends, this is the amazing thing about these fish. And the reason why they're mascots of marine protected areas is because these fish, when they get bigger and older, they can have exponentially more offspring. So an 18-year-old rockfish can have 1,700,000 babies in its 18 years of life, which is a lot more than the seven-year-old one. So essentially when we leave these fish in the ocean, safe in marine protected areas, um, not only are they making more kind of offspring to populate that home range where they live, but many of those fish end up outside of marine protected areas. And if you like to fish, you're thinking, hmm, that's pretty smart because a lot of those babies will then grow up outside of an MPA and they're available for us to catch and eat. So that little phenomenon is called the spillover effect. And that is why the boffs or the big old fertile female fish, B-O-F-F-F, -F -F, are the mascots of marine protected areas because uh, they grow big, they have lots of babies, and they help to populate areas outside of marine protected areas. So next time you're trying to think of an interesting fact that maybe some people won't know, um, pull out your knowledge about big old fertile female fish. And I hope that was super interesting. I'll bring the other one back for you to see. 
Remember, this seven-year-old fish can have 150,000 babies, and this 18-year-old can have 1.7 million. So the longer we leave these fish in the ocean, the more babies they can have, and then that means more fish in MPAs and more fish outside of MPAs. So I hope you learned something new, and I hope you think that's super cool like I do. And we can't wait to have you all back in our parks. Again, we appreciate you practicing good social distancing, taking care of yourselves by washing your hands um, and using you know, your elbow to sneeze and cough and all that stuff you have to do. And we can't wait to see you again back in our parks. So thank you so, so, so much for tuning in. Don't forget that uh, you can view all of our daily live streams under the videos tab on our Facebook page. And we are doing these every single day at three o'clock. So you'll get to hang out and meet um, one of our interpreters up here in the North Coast Redwoods District and learn about things uh, that range from marine protected areas to redwood ecology, salmon life cycle. I think that's what Ryan's doing. Um, we have indigenous uh, culture of the North Coast, Humboldt history, all of that really fun, amazing content that you love to visit the North Coast to learn about. Now you can learn about here on Facebook with us every single day. So thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please share. We want to kind of share the love with all of our friends around the world, and we need your help to do it. So one more announcement. Don't forget that Wednesday is Earth Day. Every day is Earth Day, but Wednesday is the Earth Day. And we are doing tons of super fun stuff on uh, the California State Parks Facebook page. So we'll be doing a game show with a bunch of interpreters from around the state, which will be super fun. Um, we are also announcing or have already announced our Parks in Your Home Challenge. So if you haven't heard of that yet, um, it's basically a challenge where we're asking all of you, since many of our parks are closed and since a lot of you are at home, to actually tell us something special about your home or what, something that's inside of your house. So you get to become an interpreter even if you don't have the cool Stetson, um, and tell us something, post it on your favorite social media page under the hashtag Parks in Your Home Challenge. And uh, we can't wait to kind of view and share the things that you share with us. So please do participate in that. Share the challenge. Challenge two friends to do it. And uh, we can't wait to see. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Until next week, happy MPA Monday. Have a good Earth Day.